Like you want to bring about change or massive change in your life, but you have to work a long time for that. And you're kind of sort of like showing up every day and, and kind of chucking away for that revolution and the thing that you want to happen. Everybody and welcome to the Wild Wahine. This is Kaimani here with your astro forecast. Sorry if I've been like in and out. It's just that my internet was really weird. So <laughs> hopefully everything is okay because I want to have this recorded so I can put it up for you. So I just had to double check about that. Hey Zara, how are you? Thanks for joining, babe. And thanks, Megan, like coming back a third time, finally internet. Really know. Who knows? But we're gonna try to get through this. <laughs> this is the last week of Mercury retrograde. So I'm expecting for it all, you know? I, I'm, I'm open for whatever the universe is delivering up today. <laughs> so we essentially have four big things that we're gonna talk about. Saturn squaring Uranus, um, the sun moving into the sign of Pisces. We also have Venus squaring Mars and Mercury going direct and coming out of retrograde. Thank goodness. <laughs> so let's start with Saturn Uranus square. That's gonna be happening on the 17th perfecting on the 17th. This is going to be kind of some uh, a signature that's going to follow us essentially really for the rest of the year. Saturn and Uranus are not going to be too far from each other, but they will have these points where they're, you know, direct, which means they're connected and we tend to kind of feel those energies with the days leading up to that and the days after. So again, it's kind of an overall arcing energy of the year for 2021, um, but we're first feeling it on the 17th. We're also feeling it on June. We're also going to feel it again in December. So Saturn. When we talk about Saturn, we talk about traditional, we talk about things that are foundational, things that are like government or heads of state or head of household, things that hold the structure for us. Uranus would be all of the energy that is the disrupting energy, the energy that is like that bolt of lightning that comes that it, like is a cr creative force that breaks through things. It'll break up the monotony of the way things are, the rebelliousness, the innovators, all of that kind of stuff. So we can see they're kind of polar opposite energies like unstoppable force meets immovable object. The immovable object would be Saturn, unstoppable force would be Uranus. And when they come together, things can be a little bit explosive. Um, so some of the um, kind of more positive aspects of that would be um, an impulse to change or want to change something in your life. Um, it could be about creative freedom or finding freedom within creativity. So I was actually watching um, a little bit of a documentary on Enya. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Enya. She's my all time favorite favorite artist. I love her. She's amazing. She's made so many albums. I've listened to like all of her music. But anyway, so she's this wonderful prolif prolific writer. She writes with two other people, her other uh, writer that writes the music, and she also has a lyricist. And I think they're husband and wife. But um, anyway, it's the three of them that kind of sort of really create Inya, even though like she's called Inya. But anyway, I don't really know her her like Irish name. I, I can't pronounce it, but I'm just going to refer to them as Enya. <laughs> so she was talking about how she goes to the studio from 11 to 6, like Monday through Friday, sitting there, you know, and, and she'll write music or whatever, or just waiting for the muse to come. Now she puts out music every like five or six years or so. So, but when she puts out stuff, it's just like gorgeous and amazing. But she still has this habit of sitting down and saying, I'm blocking out this time for the creative muse to happen. And I just thought that that was such a beautiful thing. And me being an artist myself and like loving artists and knowing artists, you guys know I'm an actress and I'm a writer and almost like, I would say 75% of my friends are artists. So I love artists. So like there is, I've had teachers that would talk about that, about like just carving out the time to sit down and do your art and, and knowing that the muse is going to come and it's just going to like kind of be like a lightning thing. And then suddenly you'll be like, oh, I'm inspired or, oh, I just moved through this creative block or, oh, I know how my story is going to end. Or I know what the, um, what the theme of this, you know, book is going to be, or I know the progression of the music or whatever. So she does that. And I think in that kind of ritualistic way of doing that, and she is, her son is in Taurus. I don't have like a birth time for her, so I don't know what her whole chart looks like, but I wasn't surprised because there's so many amazing musicians who are sun Taurus, like Sade is a sun Taurus. It's just like Taurians really have a connection, probably because of the Venus um, aspect for them. But, you know, they're really, just make really beautiful music that really kind of sort of is the, is the voice of the age, so to speak. I um, mean, it really speaks to you on a very spiritual, deep, loving level. So anyway, so that idea, of having like the creativity that can happen but you have the structure of like showing up to work every day and sitting in front of a piano and saying you know this thing is going to happen so think of it like that I also like to think of it a little bit like improv I don't know if you guys have ever done improv
improv like where you're there and you're in front of a stage and the audience will give you like a place and they'll give you like a relationship and then you kind of act it out and or if you guys watched whose line is it anyway it's that kind of thing it's like I, I have this creative freedom but I still have the structure in place so that I can actually enact my creativity so um, flexible thinking when I think of like um, things that are flexible but that also still have structure I think of like palm trees in a hurricane you know they're they're like strong their roots go way down but they're able to like bend and move all around same thing with bamboo a lot of um like a lot of creativity and a lot of like flexibility even though it's rooted in so um it has to do with like um crisis or things that could happen that would be like averted or manage your managing a crisis very well that would be like the more positive side of the uh, saturn uranus square and then i also when i was thinking about this i was thinking about like people like who is like somebody that you know has that kind of energy and my first thought was bernie sanders right because there's all the bernie sanders memes that are happening right now which i personally love so i was like yeah like it's so like saturn uranus is so bernie sanders i mean the man has been in office for a long time and he's been like Medicare for all and you know like really fighting for the people and, and what he believes would be good for the country in terms of everybody and having these kind of services and he's been doing this for a long time so it's a very like innovative when he's been doing it for like I don't know how many 40 some years or whatever so for a long time he's been working on this very innovative thing so I just kind of peeked at his chart and I saw he actually has Saturn conjunct Uranus Saturn is in Taurus and Uranus is in Gemini and I was like that makes so much sense so so we're thinking about like it could be that like you want to bring about change or massive change in your life but you have to work a long time for that and you're kind of sort of like showing up every day and, and kind of chucking away for that revolution and the thing that you want to have so with that sense you know in terms of all the positive things that can come from this the kind of more negative things or, um or the shadow aspect of saturn squaring uranus can be the collapse of structure, the needing for things to completely fall apart for you to rebuild and come back up again. That's important and that can also be quite painful. Um, having a foundational upheaval, so whatever the thing that was like structured in the foundation that you stood on, just falling apart. Um, natural disasters is something that comes up, like we just had an earthquake um, in Japan, I believe it was yesterday, and I was, that's so, I mentioned that in a video before, Saturn Uranus stuff, especially since Uranus is in Taurus, which is like an earth sign, so, you know, natural disasters quakes um things that have to do with and we'll also see that too because saturn's in aquarius which is an air sign i've seen patterns of like things that have to do with like um airplane stuff you know and and just like the safetyness of them or or accidents and things like that or travel related type of accidents because you know air and just kind of moving back and forth and going especially during this mercury retrograde so you guys just be really careful when you're out there traveling um um just has to also do with like non-conformity uh, a lot of like the upheaval well, we tend to think of like Uranian things to be forward thinking and just like moving towards a goal. But sometimes the upheaval comes from wanting to move back to where things are. And we've seen that, especially in the United States with our politics in terms of like sometimes the upheaval will be like traditionalist using an upheaval to go back to tradition instead of like people who are futurists upheavaling the tradition to go to the future. So you're actually going to see both. That is the interesting thing about Aquarius energy. It's not just the radical, you know, left or right. It's both sides that are saying we know what's going on and we're willing to kind of upset the apple cart to make sure our thing moves forward. So that's something that, you know, like we can potentially see with all of this kind of interesting information. So when, when I think about that, I think a lot about also to movie wise, because I lo like to associate this energy with movies because I feel like they're good archetypes. Um, there's a movie called Amadeus that I love. If you guys haven't seen it, you have to see it. But Salieri was a composer at the time who had like, a, you know, all of the music then was very much more traditional. And then you have Mozart, you know, and um, and Amadeus is like Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. So I guess it's his middle name. So um, so you have Mozart who's coming in and, uh, you know, according to the play, because Amadeus is actually a play before it was a film, but you can see the film if you're not able to see the play. Um, he's coming in with these these compositions and these progressions and all of this stuff that like no one's thinking about. And how can you put this with this? And why do you have the horns? playing over this and and so Salieri is this traditionalist and is trying to kind of sort of shut his music down and he thinks he's mad and he thinks he's crazy um oh hey Kimmy thanks for joining and and he thinks he's crazy and he's, he's insane but he's also like creating this beautiful music that he's Salieri is absolutely obsessed with so he's also trying to like 
uh, like hold him down while also really understanding that this is the future of music, which at the time, you know, Mozart was coming out with things that nobody was doing. And so it's just a really beautiful relationship between those two. And I feel like it kind of has that Saturnian and hey, it has that like Saturnian and Uranian kind of aspect to it. So with that being said, we're going to move now to the sun moving into the sign of Pisces. That is happening on the 18th. So sun is leaving Aquarius. We're leaving kind of, we're leaving Saturn for a little bit, um, <laughs> even though um, Saturn is still in Aquarius, but we're leaving, the sun is leaving there. We're going to have a lot of our other personal planets moving into um, Pisces, which is a different energy. It's a water energy. It's mutable. Um, it's definitely a lot more spiritual. It's coming from more heart centered place. So that kind of like cooler Aquarian kind of zero fucks given feel is not going to be happening. We're going to be deeply in our feelings and deeply in our like intuition and, and, and into our empathy actually. Um, so we're going to be feeling that in a tremendous way. Um, Pisces is ruled by Jupiter. So there is this kind of sense of expansive, large, um, it's a benefic planet. So we're going to, you know, be feeling like all of the things that, you know, um, are, are deeply in our psyche and the things that actually want to move us to the next space because Pisces kind of rounds out the zodiac. It's the last sign. It's the final sign that kind of assimilates all the other signs together. And it finally like is trying to like coalesce everything it's learned from Aries on. And that's why Pisces is kind of the sign of the fish, you know, swimming in two different directions, always trying to understand like what it means to be human and mixing that with our sense of spirituality, which is all of the things that are kind of behind the veil and our creativity and how those things mesh together and trying to mesh them together. Can you mesh them together? Are you still one more than the other? And how can you put that oil and water together, so to speak. So a, a couple key words about Pisces and the Piscean energy that we're going to be experiencing for the next couple of weeks. Spirituality has to do a lot with dreams, a lot with mythology, archetypes, um, idealism. You know, it's kind of sort of taking that idealism that really does come out of Aquarius. Like there is this sense of like, these are my ideals. These are the things I stand for. And it's fixed energy. So I'm going to focus on that. And Pisces kind of takes that, all of that energy and takes it to like the watery place, the, the, the archetype place, the emotional and the spiritual place within us um, so that we can kind of like almost takes it outside of us so that we can see it and then we want to be that thing and we want to live it and we're kind of taking it into our body so that we can manifest that. So it's less about like rules or bucking structure as much as it's about like dreaming about the way that we want things to be and then kind of um, embodying that. Um, and like I said, it's feminine sign and, and mutable. So some of the positive aspects of the Piscean energy that we, you know, we'll all be feeling we're all going to have this because we have all of us have Pisces somewhere in our chart. So if you want more details about that, you can definitely book a reading. But we all have Pisces ruling in uh, one of the areas in our chart. So we all are going to be going through this energy at some part of our lives. Um, so imagination, um, boundlessness, uh, a great time to daydream, um, getting kind of really deeply into mythology and fantasy and, and just kind of thinking about the way that you want things to be. It's really great time for kind of manifestation energy. I, th I think that people manifest really from the dream space first, and then we kind of take it, we think about it, we dream about it, and then we kind of sort of put it into action. Um, so living, sometimes things kind of cook in the dream space. So that's a really good place for it to be and a lot of times people will be like oh but I don't like I don't associate myself with any kind of Piscean energy because I don't like I don't like sci-fi I don't like fantasy I don't like romance novels you know all of those things but there's other aspects like if you're a gamer and you're playing those like single player games where you get to design your own avatar and you're like playing the game that is still part of that fantasy mythological you're just kind of sort of creating your own mythology um, especially with it has to do with um, like uh, a lot of those VR kind of virtual reality games that's still part of that watching TikToks and everybody's videos and people are kind of sharing their life with you or what you, we think their life is and all that kind of stuff getting caught up in all of that that's same, still the same kind of stuff still storytelling people telling stories or sharing their life and all of that it's still kind of 
all under the umbrella of that. So, you know, that might be something that you're into. Deeply empathic, that's another thing um, that's important. And self-care ends up being something that we see a lot of during this time. Because there's, because of the deep level of empathy and the feeling of everything in that and all of that intuition, taking care of self and understanding what self-love is and giving love to others becomes important. Some of the things in, in, in Piscean energy that might be more on the shadow or negative side could be um, the idea of being kind of very restless, of not having any boundaries, of kind of just bleeding out all over the place. Water doesn't, and air too, doesn't really have a lot of boundaries. It goes to kind of the lower place, you know, wherever water is. And so there is this idea of being boundless, getting so caught up in the myth and getting so caught up into imagination and all of the things that you want to be there, or you want to create that you're actually not grounded and you're kind of not able because of that to get things done. So there can be a like a, a not really committing to things as well especially things that you're not deeply into or things that don't like kind of inspire you or make you feel like you're in that dreamy lovey space like if it's just the monotonous things in life but the things that you have to do like pay your bills and you know wash the toilet and <laughs> you know all, it's just like oh do I have to really do those things because I'd rather just like imagine and think about all those other things like yeah you still have to like pay your rent and pay your car note and and you know be responsible and do all of those kinds of things so sometimes it becomes hard to kind of deal with the earthly things because you're in this like spiritual like kind of deep feeling place um let's see and and yeah so essentially that is our sun in pisces if i have to associate that with a movie or a work of art i like to think a lot about um alice in wonderland i think like wonderland being that space of going in that journey and having this experience and and just having this really kind of like um, uh, visual experience and, and, and the food that's there and having this fantastical experience and then you take away from that something big and then you apply that into your life. Hello, Captured Imagery. Thank you for joining today. So like I said, this is going to be recorded and it's going to be up on IG and Facebook and everything so you will see it if you've missed some of it because we are coming to the end. But before we close out, we have Venus squaring Mars. That is going, you're going to start feeling that energy on the 16th, um, all the way to the 23rd, but it will be direct on the 19th. So we just came out of like a, a lot of lovey space with Mercury um, this past week. You know, um, Mercury was conjunct Venus and conjunct Jupiter, and then we had Valentine's Day. And so we had maybe some, for some of us, depending upon where it fell in your chart, some softer energy. So this is going to be a little bit more contentious. Um, Venus squaring Mars, uh, Venus being like, all things that are like loving and bringing together and having fairness and you know coming together and Mars the great separator the aggressive the soldier the way that we fight and get things done they're kind of they're in this kind of like interesting cosmic love affair where there's a lot of tension between them but at the same time um, they conflict with each other and, and when they do like sparks fly could be good could be bad it just depends now the cool thing about this is Mars right now is in the sign of Taurus because it's in Taurus Taurus is ruled by Venus so essentially it's like Mars is hanging out in Venus's house like he's just like hanging out over there he's eating chips and stuff and he's sleeping on the couch and so Venus is like okay that's fine so because of that she is in a superior placement to him so I think Venus will be overcome all of these mar these conflicts that we have I think they're gonna resolve and it's gonna be okay but it doesn't mean that it's not gonna like be a little bit contentious um, some of the time so it's kind of like hot and dangerous <laughs> you know at the same time you know and and again when with Venus it has to do a lot with our relationships so we might see it in our love relationships you know within the marriages within any kind of love relationship within your family relationships and you might also see it at work um, so on the positive side of this, what can come out? Well, this can be a really great time for artists to break through whatever it is that has been holding them back. Like if you have some, because Venus is all about like art and creating things. So if you've had just like, you've been bored with your work and you just don't feel like, ah, oh, you can't get into it or you just can't finish the novel or you just you just don't feel inspired, you might get like a big burst of energy that kind of puts you over that hump. So it can be really good because you're going to feel, in whenever Mars is in play, you're feeling energy. You have energy to do something. And it's all about like where you're going to put your energy, which is going to hopefully like result in things that are positive for you as opposed to things that can be negative for you. So big time for romance, um, a 
really big time for eroticism. So for those of you who like have people in your life or you check in someone out or whatever, this is going to be a interesting time for that. Very lusty time, very horny time. <laughs> it's like all of that. So if you're feeling that, there is no shame. You can just totally be like Venus is squaring Mars. So, <laughs> but know that that's around um, sexual attraction. All of that stuff is kind of in the air. So it could be like a great time to reconnect with um, your loved one or with your lover or with a spouse or whatever it is whoever it is that's in your life um uh the other thing that that is when there's ever there's mars there's a lot of physical tension that tends to happen so you know putting that physical tension into things and since venus is in play dance can be great anything that like can take a certain amount of strength dance is great for that i was thinking like pole dancing could be like a fantastic thing to do right now especially with that like kind of erotic sensual like get it if you want to be a person who's like getting into your sensual nature but you want to kind of sort of take some power with that um to me pole dancing is so like venus square mars that's a great aspect so anything that can that is going to take a certain amount of athleticism and strength and power but it also is has that sensual quality to it could be great to do or to try out a class or something like that um a lot of that kind of love hate relationship and in, in, in a love hate dynamic in a relationship the kind of breakup makeup if you have that person that you kind of go back and forth with a lot that could be something that <laughs> you know like happens or you kind of like see a lot of energy towards so those are some of the things that happen um on the negative end on the more negative end side of this um there can be aggression that happens um whenever there's anything that mars is involved with it tends to get heightened um a lot of jealousy the more shadowy side of venus because venus can be very like uh, luxurious with all of those kind of warm like loving tangible things but she can also be like overindulgent and jealous and like a bit spiteful so you can you know if you have a jealous lover if you're feeling a little bit more jealous than normal um, and you know working through those emotions and kind of dealing with that so it doesn't come to some type of explosion that would be great um, over sexualization kind of like way too much like or like other stuff like that that could be something that you need to kind of sort of think about and negotiate during this time um, um not a good time for plastic surgery you know um just don't do it not like like not right now wait till after the 23rd if you wanted to get a little nip tuck or whatever just because venus is squaring mars i don't just don't necessarily think that's going to turn out exactly um, the way that you want to <laughs> so i would wait on that um fights and problems in your relationship things that are just not exactly working out um, how to kind of negotiate them again Venus is in the superior square so how do you negotiate them by coming together by being sensual by 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 you know making like a delicious pie or do it like anything that you can do to kind of sort of draw in because the nature might be or the feeling might be to separate and to cut and what you want to do is try to draw in at this time if you can um, and draw in through sensual means um, a lack of self-control impulsivity those kinds of things can be things that happen too so um what I like to think of when I think of like if I'm going to associate this with a movie for you guys to think of, I like to think a lot about Beauty and the Beast um, in terms of the beast being kind of archetypally from a purely archetypal perspective, beast being the wild kind of crazy beast, very Mars like figure, very virile and masculine and all that kind of stuff. And, and then you have Belle who's kind of taming the beast with her beauty, with her intelligence, with her softness, with her charm and all of those things like and, and understanding that those two are ways they're called soft power. So in politics they talk about hard power hard power is like i'm sending in the military i'm sending in all of that soft power would be diplomacy it would be like let's open up trade or something so it's about using your soft powers to get the things that you want at this time um that's an interesting way that you can use um the energy as well so we're wrapping this up with a end of mercury retrograde on the 20th guys <laughs> yes <laughs> so we'll talk i'll talk about how my mercury retrograde went kind of towards the end. I don't want to talk about it now because I'm just knocking on the wood that everything with Mercury Retrograde is going to be okay. It's knocking again. Um, but it'll be interesting because we have been going through this retrograde period. We, we, we kind of sort of went back through all of those planets and had the experiences that we had. I'd love to hear how it was for you guys. And so we're going into a quarter moon. And so a lot of times people love to take action during this time. And so you're taking action on the things that you set your intention for on the new moon that was in Aquarius. So a really great time for this last week before we go into the 20th to finish up, finish up what you were doing, finish, um, or finish up organizing everything, all of the tasks that you have 
had all of the stuff that you were doing, make sure that you revisit those things and clean up anything that is still messy so that you can move forward when this retrograde moves forward because it'd be a really great time. Hey, Tanya, thanks for joining, girl. Like, you, this is kind of sort of the end, but like I said, I will repost this and you can rewatch it so um, so it'll be popped up again. But thanks for joining. Um, so you want to get really clear about what you want. Um, hopefully this time during the retrograde, you've been thinking about what you want to do, what you want to bring in, um, clearing up all of the places that have been maybe a little bit messy in your life or the things that just needed to be done, even if it was the mundane things like I need to keep clean out that closet or I need to talk to somebody and kind of work out this relationship or work out our friendship or figure out what we're doing. Like the, this is not, not the last week to get it done, but it's a really great time to revisit those things, clean up those things. If you've been pushing it off, get that done so that you can come out of Mercury retrograde um, with a little bit of a little bit more fire to you and kind of get into the work that we're going to be doing as you know, all the planets are going to be going through Pisces, which will be a deeply emotional place for us. So hopefully if we did all of that work, then we can just be in our feelings in a positive way as opposed to feeling like, oh, this is so heavy and this is so emotional and I have to go through all that stuff. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, my name is Kehlani. This is the Wild Wahine. If you are interested in booking a reading. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks for popping in, babe. I know. I was like, it's super late on the East Coast. <laughs> Love and light to you, too. We have to talk soon. But yes, yeah, so um, so you can find me at um, on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on YouTube at The Wild Wahine. Um, you if you want to book a tarot reading or if you want to book an astrology um, natal chart reading, you can find me at www.thewildwahine.as.me. Um, and thank you guys for joining. Make sure you like this video if you can and share it or tag people in it. That always helps. It is my great pleasure to give you guys your astro chat for this week. And I will see you guys soon. Aloha. Everybody have a wonderful evening. Bye.